Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel and we cover multi-channel and multi-carrier systems. This is going to be our introduction, our way to get into OFDM, Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. So now we're starting with multi-channel systems. In the diagram here on the right hand side, we see that the x-axis is the frequency. A single carrier system versus multi-carrier system versus OFDM. We'll get into that. So let's start with talking about multi-channel multi -channel systems. All right, here is the model. The model for multi-channel digital communication. We, sh we show in blue here the channels. We have channel 1, 2, 3, and up to capital L. Now, let's say that we are sending the information, let's say the same information, sending the same information over different channels. So we have going the information goes through the TX1 the first transmitter goes to the channel 1 and then received by the RX1 TX2 was received by RX2 and so on so instead of having one branch like in the usual case we have multiple channels then we have to ask the question how do we combine these different channels and make out our decision in this introductory level I'll just explain the channel and how to write the model Later on, we can go back to my notes where we talk about where I talk about diversity combining techniques, and uh, we can learn more about how to build the signal combiner. So, we have n goes from one up to capital N. What is n? Here in bracket, this is the channel number. So we have one up to capital N. Now, what we transmit is m, could be the first symbol, second symbol, third symbol, or capital M symbol. So small m represent the symbol that we transmit and it depends on the modulation is it binary or not up to capital M number of symbols and remember that we have the superscript here represent the channel number so we're saying that the channel or the signal to be transmitted is the real part of the signal multiplied by exponential the real part will give you the cosine the modulated signal at the receiver side we will get the signal from that branch but of course it's going to be scaled and phase delayed okay and that scale and phase delay is depend on the channel because every channel is going to have different uh, fading effect or different scale and phase and this is why we have subscript n and of course we'll have noise added which is also different from one branch to another so this is a representation of the received signal at a given branch Okay, now we can receive the signal either coherently or non-coherently. I am recalling the signal now, the received signal. And if we are going to receive the signal coherently, then we can define this scaling factor, which includes amplitude and phase as Gn. At the receiver side, we cannot tell exactly what was the amount of scaling and phase shift. So we can estimate, and this is why we have G hat, which is an estimation of the channel information. What did the channel do? And of course, uh, that is our way to estimate GN. We don't have exact GN, but we have an estimated version. The multi-channel receiver will correlate each of the L receiver signals with the replica of the corresponding transmitted signal, like we do usually, usually we have a matched filter, and we multiply each of the correlated outputs by the corresponding estimate to correct for the phase. So if it was if you had a delay of 60, we multiply by minus 60, and so on. And of course, we can also scale according to amplitude. So strong signals will be stronger and weak signals will, will have less value. Or signals going through weak channels will have less value. If we do that, if we multiply by G, we call it coherent detection. And here how it works. The received signal will be correlated, but will be also weighted properly. So if there is this green component, which is uh, where we try to estimate the channel and multiply, we call it coherent detection. Why coherent? Because we have corrected for the phase. We multiply by the conjugate. So the phase will be now zero. Alternatively, we can do non-coherent detection where we don't have to estimate the channel parameters and we can just sum without the scaling. And that's called the sum of envelope detections. So of course, this is going to be dropped. Of course, this is not going to be optimal because the signals will not be aligned Alternatively, we can square and sum, and that's called the sum of squared envelopes. So, what is the little difference between the two? 
in terms of performance. And uh, of course, you can see here that we are squaring, and this is why I call it the square law detector. This is easier in implementation. You can use diode or what have you, and we can represent the following signal. So the square law detection, it's a power detector of, of the received signal of the L channels. So let's summarize again. We have the coherent detector, the detector without the G is called the sum of envelopes. That's non-coherent. We have also another non-coherent detector, which is the a square law detector. So these are three techniques to combine the signals. And remember that we have this summation. And uh, to choose which signal was transmitted, we are creating a metric. So we are summing over all L channels. And this metric will be compared, will try to correlate with symbol one, symbol two, symbol three, to find out which one of the symbols was transmitted. And this is why we have subscript M. So this is the, the CM is our metric. Okay, so in the slide, we have defined the coherent, non-coherent. We have two different types for that. More about combining techniques can be found in my other slides. I might share the link in the comment section where we have the different combining techniques. Okay, so now let's look at single carrier versus multiple or multi-carrier systems. We talked about multi-channels. Now we'll talk about multi-carriers. A single carrier system where the entire bandwidth W is used using uh, a single Occupy bandwidth. Of course, to cover the entire bandwidth, in time domain, our pulse duration is capital T. The relation between the bandwidth and the frequency is inverse, inversely related. So to cover more bandwidth, we need smaller time durations. And this is why we have here small squares compared to the multiple carrier system. And that's the usual trend. We have one carrier usually centered at the bandwidth of the transmission. Sequential transmitter of, of, of waveforms, one after the other. Waveform are short duration, capital T, and then the waveform occupies the bandwidth, which is inversely related to the duration. If you want to use multi-carrier systems, what you have to do first is to divide the stream into capital N, which is the number of carriers. And of course, then what you need to do is you need to extend the duration. So the duration will be less and it's going to be scaled by NT because having duration which is longer, it means the bandwidth requirement will be less. So in principle, we divide the bandwidth into N different slots. Uh, and every slot will have a, will have a bandwidth of delta F. So in that case, we have parallel transmission of waveforms. We have one transmission here, one transmission here, one transmission here, and so on. Waveforms are now longer in duration by NT. And of course, the bandwidth occupied will be less by a, by a scale of uh, 1 over E. Uh, so we get 1 over NT. So the logical question now would be... Um, now, the logical question would be, why multi-carrier system? Usually, the two channel that we deal with is non-ideal. This is an example of an ideal channel where we have the bandwidth equal to W, and we have flat response, no frequency dependence. This is not truly the case. What we have in real life, we have variation across the spectrum. And I'm just showing the, the magnitude spectrum of the, of the channel, but we can also have the phase. So we can have amplitude distortion or phase distortion. An alternative way of covering the entire bandwidth with one signal, what we can do, we can divide the spectrum into smaller bands, and those bands now will almost look flat, which means we have less variation within the given bandwidth. An alternative approach to the design of the bandwidth efficient communication system in the presence of channel distortion is to subdivide the available channel bandwidth into several subchannels, like we have done here. CF is the response of the channel. As I said, I'm just showing the magnitude. We have also the, the phase response. So uh, we also have a certain noise within this bandwidth that cover the, this bandwidth. If it is white noise, then it's going to be flat and we are not showing it here. We need to divide this W, the bandwidth, into N different uh, subchannels, and those are given as delta F. The, band, the new bandwidth will be delta F. Delta F is chosen 
sufficiently small. So because the question somebody would say, how much, how many divisions should we have? It should be, we should make sure that the spectrum within the subdivision look almost flat. I cannot take from here, for example, as one division because there is a clear variation unless uh, my system is not sensitive. So delta F is chosen sufficiently small that is approximately a constant within each subband when it comes to the magnitude spectrum. The phase has to be linear. So when we do this division, for fair comparison, we have to make sure that the power that we transmit in a single carrier is equivalent to the power that is submitted uh, or transmitted over all the subchannels. The transmitted signal power to be distributed in frequency as PF such as should be uh, subject to the constraint that uh, the overall power over all the bandwidth of the power spectral density should be less than or equal to the power average. And for, if, for fairness, of course, it has to be equal. But if it is less and perform better, then we are still doing fine. So this is the motive behind the multi-channel uh, carrier systems, the multi-carrier channel, uh, the multi-carrier communication. We have we have done the multi-channel, and now we are doing the multi-carrier. What we will do in, in coming videos, we need to understand, we look at the capacity of this channel as compared to this channel. So we look at the capacity, and then we are ready to introduce OFDM. So tune with us and stay uh, with us in the coming video.